Koshi's Business Builders is proudly brought to you by our partners Dell, KPMG and Amex, who are helping small businesses grow. Coming up on Koshi's Business Builders, we meet an Aussie tour operator who's preparing for the return of international travel. Meet an entrepreneur bringing his experience from the racetrack to bespoke vehicles for the road and how to redeem all your stockpiled credit card reward points and put them to the best use. Hello, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Koshi's Business Builders. Did you know that most Aussie businesses are small businesses. In fact, over nine in 10 businesses are defined as small and they employ over 40% of Australia's workforce. That's why here at KBB, we are so passionate about supporting our small businesses and keeping you all informed and connected. Today, we're meeting a fantastic Aussie enterprise, Majestic Whale Encounters, a family owned and operated business that runs international tours like no other. Their expeditions let guests get up close and personal with whales, dolphins, leopards and gorillas in their natural habitats. On these adventures, visitors also get the chance to soak up the local culture and cuisine. Majestic Whale Encounters began because of sisters Carmen and Sarah's deep love for animals. So I'm connecting Majestic Whale Encounters with Tourism Australia with a wealth of up-to-date research at their fingertips and a focus on the benefits the industry has on the national economy. They're the ideal experts to engage. And joining me now, Philippa Harrison, the Managing Director of Tourism Australia, and of course, Carmen Ellis, the Managing Director of Majestic Whale Encounters. Ladies, good to see you. And um, Philippa, what sort of feedback are you getting at Tourism Australia from experienced tourism businesses like Majestic? The very common feedback is that this is the darkest time that they have ever faced. They've had a really, really challenging 18 months. And it's worth putting this into context that the tourism industry is responsible for about one in 13 jobs in Australia. But there's also agencies that focus on giving them grants to help get through. And I'd be really happy to connect Carmen if she's not already with some with the state and the federal grant um, agencies to see if there's any possibilities for that. Carmen? You've done a great job in pivoting into some really unusual areas, particularly the children's books. How's that gone? My mum loves poetry and she sort of passed a little bit on to my sister and I. And so we thought, why don't we just write our own beautiful ocean themed children's books? So we gave it a go and sent our first one out there into the world and it really took off. Uh, so now we have four in the, in the mix now. Oh yeah, Carmen with some ocean loving kids, I would love to see some of those books as well. One of the things I'm interested to know is that um, domestic travel in April and May this year really got back up to pre-pandemic levels. Um, spend was in fact even higher. Did you benefit from that or is your business predominantly international? The problem with us is all of our uh, tours are seasonal. So it all depends on where the whales and dolphins are at what times. And so unfortunately with all the border closures, they just came around the wrong time for us. We have offered tours within Australia before. We've done tours in the Ningaloo Reef with swimming with whale sharks. We've done Kangaroo Island swimming with both dolphins and seals over there. We found that um, Australians just travel differently in Australia. And so we've set about under our Holiday Here This Year campaign to try and get Australians to travel a little bit differently in Australia. And I really hope that that is the silver lining of this time is that we've all fallen in love with our backyard again and that we will keep travelling like this in Australia going forward. Philippa, how confident are you that the domestic travel market is going to bounce back to pre-pandemic levels. Really confident, and I'll tell you why. One is uh, looking at that consumer research. Already, even in lockdown, about 60% of people are planning a domestic holiday in the next six months already, so that's great. Um, but we're also seeing it play out around the world. So we market in 15 countries around the world. Most of those, where they're, they're not locked down, are back to 60% of their pre-pandemic levels. And with Carmen, it's a lot about international visitors, and, and that is, 
borders opening, that is vaccination policies, the whole thing, isn't it, to, to get that back up and going? Yeah, the only way we're going to get back up and going is by getting vaccinated. You know, it's it gives people more confidence to travel. Again, our research is telling us that 75% of people who have the vaccine are now confident to get out and travel in Australia. Well, we can't wait to do it. Great discussion. Uh, Carmen, I have grandkids in Perth and we were only talking the other day of having a family holiday and meeting them at Ningaloo Reef. I'll be giving you a call, that's for sure, to organise it. Sounds good. Thank you so much for joining us. And Philippa, can you sort of take Majestic under your wing offline? It would be my pleasure, Carmen. Excellent. All right, all the very best, Carmen. Thanks a lot. Stay with us. After the break, we meet an entrepreneur taking his lessons from the racetrack to the road. Welcome back. Thanks for watching Koshy's Business Builders. Over the past financial year, there's been a 15% increase in businesses with less than four employees. In that same period, more than 200,000 new ComBank business transaction accounts were opened as more Aussies decided to take the plunge and be their own boss. Jonathan Okada is one of them. After a decade of building race and road vehicles in Australia, Japan, LA and the UK, Jonathan started his fabricating business, Kanzai Giant Design Factory, in Sydney's Northern Beaches. As the boss of my own business, all the hard work that I put down is um, an investment into growing the Kanzai Giant name domestically and internationally for a wider audience. I'm probably most proud of creating these unique pieces that surpass my customers' expectations and it's really rewarding to see, you know, their reaction when they see the job that I've done for them. So my business is a metal fabrication slash machine shop. We specialise in building custom motorcycles or race cars, especially the early vintage Harley Davidsons. Here to tell us more about how he's bringing his experience from the racetrack to building bespoke vehicles for his customers is Jonathan. How did you get into the industry? Have you always been in? I ended up buying a project car for myself when I was in high school and worked out pretty quickly that the fabrication and machining side of things was the most expensive part of any race car or motorcycle build. So me not being born with a silver spoon in my mouth, I had to pick up the welder and the grinders pretty quickly and teach myself. What's your favourite project you've ever done? I used to work for a race team in Japan and we used to compete in Japan and in the States as well. So like a thousand horsepower, 1200 kilo drift car that I built in Japan was probably, or the proudest achievement maybe. Fast and the Furious minus the Hollywood. A lot of late <laughs> nights and fast food and hotels and race tracks and stuff like that. So Jonathan, what were some of the biggest challenges in, in growing the business? When I started my own business, I started it because I was good at what I was doing and I also um, loved the work, but the admin side of things wasn't something that I was too keen on or never good at. So the ComBank business transaction account helps me separate my business and personal spendings and it also helps me keep track of all the receipts that I lose in the car and it means that I also don't lose any money come quarter. And you can focus on what you love doing. Exactly, yeah. Less time on the computer, more time in the workshop. So what's your dream for the business? Probably just to grow my name, grow the brand domestically and internationally. And there's a couple of bike and car shows overseas that I've got my eye on and um, hopefully send cars and bikes overseas and kind of grow my audience internationally. That's fantastic. And the word of mouth has been strong? Yeah, word of mouth is great. It doesn't matter if I lose money on a job, but I never compromise on the quality that leaves the door. Good on you for giving it a go. That's fantastic. Thanks, That's mate. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Cheers. Are you a woman with a great business or a great business idea? You're invited to a free virtual event hosted by Koshy's Business Builders in partnership with Dell Women's Entrepreneur Network. Building brave businesses Lessons from Female Founders is an inspiring online-only event connecting Australia's next generation of women entrepreneurs. Join us on Wednesday, October 27, and register now.
Welcome back. This month, we've focused our Entrepreneur in the Spotlight segment to women who are achieving amazing results as business leaders right across Australia. Today, I'm joined by Joe Burston, Dell Technologies Ambassador, who spoke with Michelle Aguilar from Vapor about how she and her business partner are using AI to solve a problem common in councils, not just in Australia, but globally. Hi, David, and thanks for having me. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, and for Michelle Aguilar and her team at Vapor, that's just how they stumbled across a need in the utilities industry to streamline how the pipes, which are used for our water and waste, are maintained and upgraded. We spoke to Michelle to find out what was the motivation that led her to developing and building this world-class technology. My name's Michelle Aguilar, and I am the CTO and co-founder of Vapor. So Vapor primarily finds faults in pipes using artificial intelligence. So there are kilometers of stormwater and sewer pipes running underneath the roads and under the ground that need to be inspected for faults, and they do that typically using cameras. So we use AI to process that footage and tell utilities where the issues are. The way that utilities and councils can use us is that we've built a web platform where they can upload this footage of these underground pipes. So what happens as soon as it's uploaded is the AI will run through and process that footage. So it identifies things like roots, cracks, breaks, and tells these utilities where those issues are and how bad they are as well. So my co-founder and business partner, Amanda, she used to be one of those engineers watching hours and hours of video footage. And so she came to me with the idea and said, can we build something so that engineers don't have to do this anymore? My background's in engineering, so I'm a mechatronics engineer, but I also have a sub-major in intelligent systems. So I had a, a bit of knowledge on AI before we started this whole process, but um, at heart, I just love solving problems. So I've never been involved with a startup at this stage before. I previously worked for a startup that was more developed, but I loved the idea that Amanda brought to me and I could see the potential for it. So that's why we made a really good team and, and get it off the ground. I didn't really see myself necessarily starting up my own business, but uh, this, is, this is the first business that I've ever run. And the opportunity and the team uh, of me pairing up with Amanda was too good to turn down. When we first started the company, this was the only technology like it on the market. So since then, uh, we have seen other competitors start to pop up on the market, but we've maintained a lead over those competitors. When we first started working together, we went through a program called Startmate, which is an Australian accelerator program, and that really taught us how to identify the size of the market and also the opportunity, how to actually sell. And from there, we kind of leapfrogged into the UK. We had this opportunity to be part of an innovation lab with a water utility. So that water utility is one of the biggest ones in the UK and even in the world. And they ran an innovation lab where they wanted us to help them with some problems. And we were one of eight companies out of 100 that actually made it through. One of the biggest challenges that we've had with adoption is the actual uptake of artificial intelligence. So it's not a technology that's been around for a really long time, but as people begin to understand it more, the adoption of it is a lot better. I think as engineers, we're always focused on solving problems, but one of the things that you must do in a business is be able to sell. So there's no point solving a problem if it's not gonna be something that you can sell. So our first bit of funding was actually through the Startmate Accelerator program. But following on the success of that, we were introduced to a bunch of angel investors and we were able to raise a seed round. So network groups are really important for female entrepreneurs because they connect you with people that are going through similar challenges to the ones that you're going through as a business leader. So it really helps to uh, have somebody that understands what you're going through and has also done it before. Keep watching because after the break, we get tips from an expert on how retailers closed by COVID lockdown restrictions can prepare for reopening. Don't miss this really timely advice. Welcome back to Koshi's Business Builders. Remember business trips? 
According to Tourism Research Australia, business travel dropped a whopping 47% from the start of the pandemic to June this year. Now, with vaccination rates up and borders beginning to open, business owners can start thinking about how to use the stockpile of rewards points they earned through their credit card spend. Spoiler alert, you can get more than just free flights. <laughs> Joining me now from American Express is Ash Sukwani, the Director of Global Commercial Services Account Development. Ash, thanks for joining us. With a reduction in business travel during the pandemic, how have businesses been redeeming their points? We've seen small business owners uh, redeem their points to reward their staff through gift cards from 30 big brands. These points can also be used to pay down eligible uh, business expenses on your statement. With select plus pay uh, with points option that's available. Further to this, business owners can extend their cash flow by using points to pay down their overall balance on their card. So what criteria should a small business owner look for when assessing which business rewards points program is right for them? I feel it's pivotal for business owners to consider a reward program as part of their um, total business card assessment. An important aspect to consider is what do you want to redeem your business rewards for? Would that be for travel for yourself, um, your staff pending restrictions easing, gift cards for staff rewards, or to redeem against items like office supplies? The other important question is how much are you likely to spend on your um, credit card each year, then you can calculate what you can redeem in return. Now, give us some inside tips. What kinds of everyday business expenses can earn you valuable reward points? Every card issue in the market is different, um, but uh, with our business card members, they could earn up, um, they could earn points on every dollar spent, including travel, utilities, insurance, telecommunications, supplier payments, and even government spend. With the reward program that we have available, every time you spend or make a purchase, you'll earn points. You can even earn points by paying your tax with the ATO. Um, with our platinum card, you can earn up to 2.25 membership reward points for every dollar spend, which also includes complimentary travel insurance when you travel. Ash, thank you so much for your time today and helping small businesses to get the most from their credit cards. Now, if you own a restaurant, a shop, or perhaps a beauty salon, things are looking up. New Roy Morgan research shows that business confidence is 22% higher compared to this time last year, all thanks to plans for reopening business in different states. Now, this week for Ask Koshi, I have a question from a business that has a reason to celebrate. My name is Mitch Cronin, and I'm the manager of Cunning Barbazel. Due to the impact of COVID, we had to change the way we trade and operate as a business. The question we're asking now is, now that businesses are starting to reopen, what can we do to get our business, and many like ours, back on track? Great question, Mitch, and so many people in the same spot. To help me answer this question, I'm joined by Naomi Mitchell, partner of private enterprise at KPMG Australia. Naomi, the clients you're talking to, how are they preparing to reopen? Great question. The clients have been navigating lockdown and they are reopening with agile business plans to allow them to really deal with the situation if restrictions come back in. The three top challenges that we're really seeing in this industry at the moment, number one is cash flow. Do I have enough working capital to really restock my business and keep my venue functioning? The second issue that we've got is brand reputation. And that's the need to really engage with the customer now in order to really grab their social spend when the market reopens. And the third issue that we've got is obviously staff retention. What are the main things that small business owners should be focusing on? Unfortunately, we need to go back into absolutely micromanaging every facet of our business and plan, plan, plan. There's agile plans in place that have got a really short lead time because we need to be able to react if the restrictions change. There's some simple things that can really maximise efficiency upon reopening. Things like set menus, standard seating times, and I think our operators have also got to be looking for opportunities that might be around the corner. 
For example, are we about to see an outdoor dining explosion revolution in Australia? And the other great opportunity that's out there now is of course that idea of the great staycation because it looks like it's going to be around for a lot longer. What about government support? A lot of businesses have relied on that up till now. Going forward, is there still support available? There are federal, state and local grants that are available, but the state-to-state -state differences really makes this a hard area to navigate, especially for our multi-state operators. KPMG have actually got a great tool on their website, which allows people to go and have a very quick overview of a concise summary of the grants and stimulus that's available. So I would recommend that business owners start there in conjunction with conversations with their professional advisors. Yeah, and, and keep going back to it because it changes all the time, doesn't it? Keep all yourself the time. up to date. <laughs> Naomi, some great advice there. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, and good luck to Quarter Bar and all the businesses reopening their doors. We want those customers back. Well, that's the show for today, but I look forward to seeing you at the same time next week with more inspiring stories from Aussie entrepreneurs. In the meantime, visit our website, koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au for more tips and tricks to help you grow your business, particularly when the economy starts to reopen. While you're there, sign up for our weekly newsletter. See you next week.